both legal and illegal. It doesn't count otherwise. Otherwise, you simply, it, it can't just be transactions within uh, an illegal economy because how do you buy, like, you know, food in a house or something? You know, so you, go, you must have a legal to illegal bridge. Um, so, where I see crypto as is effectively as a replacement for cash, but not as a replacement for, as a primary, uh, not, not as I do not see crypto being the primary database. So now this is this is sometimes taken being like I'm being judgmental about crypto, and it's actually I think there's a lot of things that are illegal that shouldn't be illegal. Um, um, but you know, so it's not as though I think that sometimes governments just have too many laws about that they should they should have, shouldn't have so many things that are illegal. Didn't you say like on Mars there'd be less laws? Hopefully. Yeah. Do you still propose a direct democracy on Mars? Uh, I think probably that's the best that, I mean, probably it's the best thing. Mars technocracy. <laughs> the Mars technocracy. Yes. And you want to make laws super short and simple, right? Well, yeah, I mean, like, if people can't understand laws, then how do you, then what's usually going to happen is some special interest is going to bamboozle the public with long laws. Yep. And then the, the law is, like reading this law, this law is like the size of Lord of the Rings, but a very boring version of it. <laughs> <laughs> like the dealership thing is just crazy to me. You know, like America is supposed to be competitive, free market. It's weird, right? Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, it's just like you want to keep the law short and have it give them some kind of sunset period so they don't just stay there forever. Otherwise, it's just accumulate over time and just eventually it'll be unwieldy. So the laws should have some time frame associated with them. They automatically go away. Um, so, uh, I mean, it's just keep laws short to avoid trick, trickery and, and sort of special interests uh, that ultimately does not benefit the public. Um, and, and then I think direct, direct democracy is less susceptible to uh, corruption than a representative democracy. So... Um, you know, corruption just being like, to what degree is this uh, action being taken that do not serve the general, the interests of the population, you know, um, do, do not result in a net increase in um, population happiness as a whole. Uh, so that's, that's, that's why I think probably direct is better. Um, and, and then, you know, just have, have things in real time. So you know, if you, if you want to vote on something, you just you can vote on it real fast. You know? um, probably make it e I would say make it easier to get rid of laws than to put them in, um, because these things tend to have a lot of inertia and so have a, have a bias to, towards having laws go away and not be there. Well, you know, so like maybe it, it takes sixty percent to put a law in place, but forty percent to remove it or something like that. Yeah, cool. I, 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 I mean, let's try it. You know, see what happens. The bills are extremely long that they pass. No one reads them. <laughs> yeah, the con hardly anyone in Congress has read the bill. And if you, even if they've read the bill, if you quiz them on the details, they would not. <laughs> They'll find their page. Like, yeah, it's like tell me what's yeah. This there was no idea. It seems kind of alarming that that's like the status quo and everyone just accepts it, but. Yeah, the, these laws tend to be written by industry groups as well. So that, that, that they'll write the law and then and then interact with the congressional staff and and, and uh, but most of the work will be done by the industry groups, and so they're going to write laws that entrench the their position. It's typically. like the, the people or the players buying the ref, like you were saying yeah, earlier. Exactly. Is that exact? Thing. So you get the regulatory capture of the. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The players shouldn't be paying the ref salary type of thing. Well, the ref shouldn't be thinking, I'm going to re retire and get paid by the players. <laughs> so, it's kind of amazing that it works as well as it does given all these issues. Um, so, um, yeah, so then. PayPal. I, I ended up getting malaria, and <clears throat> anyway, in two thousand one, um, 
No, oh, two, yeah. Two, yeah, 2001. Where yeah, tell us about this. The malaria thing. Um, well, that was you went on vacation, right? Yeah, we're in South Africa we're with Kimball, actually. Yeah, it's crazy. And then came back and had like a near-death case of malaria. Yeah, we lived, grew up in South Africa. We, we'd go to the bush felt all the time, mm -hmm. to the what you guys call safari. And you just you just had a house in the bush. So you, you used to go there every every few weeks or so. I don't think we ever took malaria tablets. We yeah. didn't have malaria in those days. I think there was a drought and then a flood and then suddenly there were mosquitoes. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. And so f we, were, we were told to, and we did take malaria tablets. You, you yeah. took them as well. And, um, and when you got back, the, he was in Stanford and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Our uncle, who's a doctor in, in South Africa, is like, he has malaria. Wow. And they're like, no, no, he doesn't have malaria. We checked. So, uh, check again, malaria well, kind of hides in the body. And they, that's why they wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so this was after PayPal got started? Oh, this is 2001. <laughs> so it was sort of after the PayPal, PayPal coup. So I was, I was on the PayPal board and I was provi you know, providing sort of product uh, advice and whatnot, but uh, in December, well, late, late December 2000, went on a trip to South Africa, came back January, early, early January 2001, and I had a severe case of malaria, almost died. Um, I sat next to his bed for about five days, mm -hmm. yellow, and oh my God. just oh my God. tubes going in and out of him, just sat early morning till late at night, just waiting to see, and then they said to me, get some some uh, pajamas for him, and uh, the closest store was some like dress for less or something. So I just got him some pajo uh, pajamas, and then then the next thing, five, after five days, he woke up and he says, "So there's bunnies on my pajamas." <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit, uh, I think they were bunnies or wow. or ducks or something because that was what I could get, and then um, I knew he was better. You were sleeping. I mean, like your it affected your brain that. That harshly? Uh, yeah, no, it was bad. It was, yeah, it was really bad. Um, so that change your perspective? How did it like influence you after that? I don't know. I, 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 I don't think it changed me that much, would you say? I don't think it changed you. No, I don't think it did. We covered and went back to um, yeah. But how many times have you been on vacation? I lost like 50 pounds, though. It was great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, no more vacations, though. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was. It took me like almost six months to get back to normal. Um, wow. So, uh, and then in, so in two thousand one, um, I was thinking about you know what to do next, and uh, and um, I thought the um, you know this is like okay sustainable energy like basically electric cars, solar, um, space. Uh, and, and then a friend of mine asked me, you know, so what are you going to do next? And I said, well, you know, that's, so I would love to do something in space, but I didn't think anything of, that there's anything that a private individual could do in space. But um, at least I'm going to go on the NASA website and find out when people are going to Mars. Mm -hmm. And I go on the net web, NASA website and it's nowhere to be found. And so I was like, well, this is pretty weird. Um, and then I discovered that it was actually a NASA policy not to talk about it. Um, really? Yeah, at the time. Huh. Why, why was that, do you think? Um, what I was told is that uh, when George Bush the first uh, was, um, he, when he was elected, he, he said in 90, he asked NASA to put together a plan to send people to Mars mm -hmm. in 90 days. They came back with a plan and it was $500 billion. Um, and uh, it says, well, that, this is like political suicide. So he, then after that, talk of manned missions to Mars were banned. Um, that's what I sold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, anyway, so it's like, well, you know, maybe there's something that can be done here to get the public excited about going to Mars. And if, if I get the public excited, then they will vote NASA to have more funding. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so the original idea for SpaceX was just to have a philanthropic mission to Mars. Yeah, it actually, just started as a graphic of a of a pot plant. You just need no just need plant. to get the pot plant to Mars. You know, it was like an inspiration. Sure. Just, just to, as a as a as a way to prove to the world that it could be done. 
Uh, yeah, so the mission was called Mars Oasis. There was uh, seeds and dehydrated nutrient gel that would hydrate upon landing. You get this great picture of green plants on a red background. Um, you're like the first sort of life as we know it on Mars. And the you could also learn a, you know, a lot about what does it take to keep plants uh, alive and have a little miniature greenhouse on, on the surface of Mars. Um, so that's, that's what I initially pursued as, as like a way to basically increase NASA's budget. That was, it wasn't, let's create a space company. It was, how do we get NASA's budget increased so we can go send people to Mars? Um, and I, there was stuff, I was trying to figure out how to get this thing launched. And I, um, the, the rockets, the European and US rockets were too expensive and I couldn't afford, afford them. So um, I went to Russia to try to buy some ICBMs uh, in 2001, you know, literally. Um, and uh, they, they kept raising the price on me and it was quite, been quite difficult. Um, and I said, I, you know, I could afford to pay like, I don't know, $9 million for an ICBM but not, not 20, because I figured we need to do two of these missions because odds are good that one would fail and then it could have a, a negative impact potentially. Um, so, yeah, I was 